Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. A friend of mine said, uh, I really like the way you're, you're joyous opening. And I said, yeah, it's like, uh, good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> Remember that <laughs> Robin Williams movie anyway? Good morning, Blackstone, or good morning, the world. Okay, <laughs> when you're at the center of the world, then everything's the world. So when you say good morning, you're saying good morning to the world. So the title of this morning's talk is Desire is Good. Desire is Good. Remember that movie about Wall Street? I forgot the name of it, but he was kept saying greed is good. Greed is good. That was the, that was the song of the 80s. Uh, with Reagan and, and um, the growth and the greed is good and capitalism and making money and anyway. So the title of this talk is um, Desire is Good. Now if you're on the spiritual path or the transcendental way or you're trying to be good <laughs> We think desire is bad. So, oh, I got too many desires. I shouldn't desire that. Oh, no, I desire that donut. Oh, smack, smack. Desire is good. That's desire is, but didn't Buddha say desire or craving is the cause of suffering? And so all these uh, uh, pop spiritual advice is uh, getting rid of desire. Even the Pictus. Or the Greek philosopher say, oh, you know, desire, get rid of desire. You know, so this whole, I think his desire is bad, but we can't get rid of desire. So obviously something is wrong. It turns us into a self-loathing. Oh, I've got desire. I shouldn't want that, but I do, and I can't stop wanting it. I shouldn't want it. I should stop, but I can't. Yada, yada, wah, 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 the tape loop of self-loathing. But no matter what I do, it's wrong. This is, uh, you know, this is the, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I play around with Zen. I'll, I'll say I play with it. I'm not a Zen Buddhist. I'm not preaching Zen. I'm not selling Zen Buddhism. I'm not selling anything. But I like to play with stuff. Uh, when you play with something, it's like a Rubik cube. You know, you play with it. Uh, if if you're if you're doing art, you play with it. Uh, it's not serious. Oh, I got to do this art. There's a play. Children know this, but they lose it when they become adults. But the sense of play is creative. Because and there's no desire in play. I mean, the child you may desire to play, but you don't desire what the objects of your play. So kids are playing on the at the beach and they're making a sandcastle. And they get really angry if you don't step so much. That's my stand, ca sandcastle, you know, and then they get into a, a tiff or a fit because some other kid messes up their sandcastle. But then when the mother calls them for dinner, they run. Forget the sandcastle. Or the water comes in and the sandcastle's gone. You know, so they're not desiring the sandcastle, but they desire to play. So this, this, so life. So if we look at desire, if you can't get rid of it, you can't live with it. You can't live without it. You're, you've created a uh, what's called a double bind, where no matter what you do, is lose lose. Can't desire it. Can't not desire it. Lose, lose, you see. So this, America's stuck in this. We've got two commandments in America. There's a spiritual commandment and there's a consumer commandment. <laughs> see, Christ and the consumer, right? So the commandment of Christ, you see, we think, is to don't desire, be selfless, be compassionate. Don't be self-interested. That's the ego. Don't desire stuff. Don't accumulate. Don't hoard stuff. Don't desire that donut. You see, so desire is bad. But then consumerism, 
you got to desire products or the economy the economy collapses you got to you got to keep desiring new products so i if you're a cook you you love getting new gadgets for the kitchen the the original kitchen is a knife, a spoon, and a bowl in a pot. <laughs> now look at our kitchens. Well, I was over at my son's the other day, and and he likes to cook, and he was all ex he was excited about getting a a gadget he uh, uh, to scoop out olives. So you got a new gadget. It scoops out the olive. You can take off a little knife prong. You can stick the olive with that. You see, so it's kind of like a an olive grabber. I just use, you know, a toothpick uh, for my martinis, you know. But any, but but then, you know. Anyway, the point is, we we desire new gadgets. We desire new stuff. If you're a photographer, I remember being a photographer. Boy, I would want those new lenses, you know. And if you're a computer, if you're into computers, oh, you want that new computer or that new software. Or uh, that new app or something, or get get something up there. So there's always this desire of attainment, you know. And then the spiritual commandment says, "Oh, don't don't attain, let go," you know. So you've got these two commandments going on um, in our culture: desire, don't desire. Do you get that? And, and that include that your life will be better if you get that. Don't get that. Don't desire that. You know, let go, gain, let, you know, bah, wah, 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 wah. So this creates, you know, when you have two commandments in the same situation. Now, the same situation is you. In other words, wherever you are, you're in a situation. We don't, we don't, if, if I go to the uh, kitchen to get some coffee, I may feel like, you know, I, I, I desire some more coffee. So I go to the kitchen. Now what I'm going to really is just another situation. In other words, I'm in the kitchen situation where I can get coffee. I don't go to the bedroom. If I went to the bedroom, I would be in a bedroom situation. If I go to the living room, I'd be in a living room situation. But the coffee's in the, in the kitchen, so I'm going to go to a coffee situation where there's a coffee pot and yada, yada, yada. You sound get satisfied with that desire. But let's, let's look, let's just get up, put on a little wide angle lens here. There's only one situation and that's the place you're in. Just look at this for a minute. We think the room, the living room is the living room. To go to work, that's, I go to, that's another situation. So there's these other situations. But if you go to work, or if you at work and you come home, or just make it simple, I'm in the foyer right now, but if I go into the living room, uh, when I get there, I'm still me in the sit There's only one situation. It just changes around us. It's like the GPS navigator. On the GPS navigator, this, this is a different paradigm of being in the world because you are always the X or the center of the GPS and if you don't move, the map doesn't move. Or let's say here, I'm at the X here in the foyer. Now if I don't move, the situation doesn't change. I'm in this situation talking to you, you see. But if I go to the living room, what I'm st still at this, it's like on the GPS. I don't move. The house moves, the world moves around me. This is two different ways of looking here. So follow it now. On the flat map, the map stays the same and you move on it. So if this, and this is our common sense, but we don't question it. But if we really look at the GPS navigator, and just the same, let's say, say you're in a car and your wife's got a map and she's plotting the way to get from here to there. And there's only one way to get there. 
on the flat map. So you, there's only, and, and if where you're going to get, say, let's say that's home. In other words, if, if you go, if wherever you're going on the GP, on the map, we could say it's home. When we get the, not, not your literal home, but you'll be at rest. You'll, you'll be there. You'll be at home. You'll be at rest. You will have arrived. And the desire to get there will, pain of that desire will be over. Ah, we've got, whether it's going to Walmart or whatever, you, if you're going to some place, when you get there, you will be relieved from the desire or the tension to get there. You see, so you could say you're always, you're always going home. So on the flat map, there's time. I'm here, and there's, a, there's one way to get there, the shortest way. And when you get, the map stays the same, I move. But on the GPS, now pay attention here, you're always at home. The world moves around you. The map changes. I, if I don't move, the map doesn't change. But when I move, I'm always at the center. So looking at this house here, right here in the foyer, this is the center of the world. From this point right here, I can go outside, I can go into the town, I can go into the county, I can go into the state, I can go into the east coast, I can go into the western hemisphere, I can keep expanding out, you know, but I'm always here. I'm always at home. Now, if this, in the GPS world, wherever I move, I'm always at the center and the world moves around me. So I'm always in this situation. I'm always in, there's only one situation and it's now. And if I move, if I go to the living room or go to the kitchen, I'm still in the same situation. It's just that the situation has a different form. But I'm always at home. So this is Zen in the sense that Zen says, coming and going, you're always, you never leave home. Coming and going, you never leave. That's a GPS way of looking at the world. It's not that there are two different worlds. It's there's two different ways of looking at the world. One of them creates suffering, and the other one doesn't. <laughs> the flat map world, which is very it is the common sense world we live in, created by Newton and Descartes, for instance. Remember the old Middle Ages, the, the Middle Ages. Europe was the center, the earth was the center of the universe, man was the center of all the species, and that was the center, and if you went out beyond the horizon, you would fall off. They didn't go out there, it was unknown, you see. But then suddenly that, that worldview broke up, and now the explorers were released. Well, the world is knowable. If you, if you go on the ocean, wherever you are, you're at the center. It's knowable. You can go around the globe because it's, no, it's the same world. It's knowable. You're always at home. You're not in, going to be eaten up by dragons and monsters or fall off the edge of the earth into an abyss, you see. The world is knowable. Anyway, I, I ramble around here, but the point is, if there is a point, can I get back to the point, please? <laughs> Desire is good. Desire is good. So, desire is life. Desire is life. You can't have life without desire. Ants desire sugar. Lions desire zebra. You know, life is desire. It's a hunger. Life, life eats life. Life is a desire. But when humans get hold of it, we do a little twist, you see. So instead of being life, or instead of being at the center of the world, we're going to do a little shift here. Let me see if I can hang on to it myself. <laughs> <laughs> got two different views. They got the GPS viewpoint where no matter where I go, I'm at the center. So if I desire to go to Richmond on the GPS, when I get to Richmond, I'm still at the center. 
So there's nothing, when you're always at the center, there's nothing to attain. But if you're on the flat map, I will want to go to, the world is the same, and I will want to get from here to there, because there I will feel at the center. So if I have a desire on this flat map, I desire to be at home. If I get that new car, I'll be at home. I won't have a desire. But then another desire comes up. So we're under the illusion when we get something, we crave something, that will be the end of not being at home. You see, I mean, in other words, when I, the idea behind craving, the misuse of craving or desire, is that we believe when I get that object of desire, I will feel at rest. I got that donut. Oh. But all I really have is the release of the pain of desire. The donut itself has no pleasure in it. As a sense pleasure of seeing, but that if you ate too many of them, that pleasure turns into pain. So it's not permanently in the desire. Otherwise, you could eat. You would. You would just eat. Well, anyway. <laughs> so you get the idea here. So if if I, if I'm on a flat map world, which is the world we assume is the only world, that the world is out there, and if you want to get anywhere, you have to have a map. But the world doesn't change in this viewpoint. You see, I change. I have to move from here to there. So we believe that we're born into a world. We live here for a while and we leave it. And the world stays the same exactly like we perceive it now. You see, that's, that's the assumption of the, of the Newtonian world that was created at the death of the Middle Ages. The idea that the world is made of things that are outside of me, and you can map them, and you can describe them, and you can fix them, you can analyze them and break them up into atoms and molecules, you can discover how they work, and you can fix them and change them, and you can create air conditioning, and you can do all kinds of stuff from that viewpoint, which is what we've done in the modern world. Look what we've done in the past 400 years. Nothing has changed from the first thousands of years and suddenly in the last 400 years everything's changed and more and more we're living in a world you see of a double bind where nothing we can do gets out of the pain of not being at home I never feel at home I just got a new car and it was I had the new smell for a while oh lord my new car but it's not too long before Oh, I should have got that car. That has, you know, that has this or that, or the new smell goes, or whatever. We want something else. Now I want a new kitchen. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it doesn't take long before the new kitchen is your old kitchen. So this desire to be at home is the result of our map, the way we look at the world. We look at the world on a flat map. And I have to, and I'm, and I have to get home. So the so the object of desire on this map is to get home where you don't have any desires. So I got to I got to get something in order to get rid of the pain of desire. Desire, if you look at it, is pain. There's pain in it. There's a tension. I want it. Oh, I want it. That's not home. That's not at ease, that's dis-ease. This desire to be at home. And so we can translate that in anything. Desire to be famous, desire to be, get a lot of fame on Facebook, the like to, the desire to get a lot of viewport, viewers for my talk, the desire to be respected, the desire to have my opinion appreciated, the desire to be, uh, have merit for all of my studies and work and, and all of my my good works, you know, the desire to be at home, the desire to be at ease, the desire to and desire. <laughs> the problem is the map. In our culture, this is a cultural worldview. So it's like a fishbowl. And when you're born into this culture, 
the fishbowl shapes your consciousness. And you can't, the fish can't see the fishbowl. If you've got a square fishbowl, the fishbowl is going in squares, but he can't see the bowl. All he's doing is knocking into a coin. He's just swimming in the bowl. So then, but there's something wrong. He knows it's not the ocean. He knows he's not at home. He knows he's contained. He knows he's going in circles. What's the cause? Well, it must be the other fish. Or it must be something in the fishbowl. But not the fishbowl. Fishbowl is the map. So we're swimming in a map, a fishbowl map that creates our discontent because we can never get home. Well, now technology comes along and gives us a GPS. And right there, you see, there's the different paradigm. But we think it's just another, it's something in the fishbowl. <laughs> it's a different map inside the fishbowl. But if we really look at it, and this is, this is the map of Buddhism or Zen Buddhism, coming and going, you're always at home. We just, oh, well, that's neat. That's a Zen thingy. What is that? Well, what else is new? We just skip right over this stuff. We don't look at it. We don't work it. We don't chew it. We don't digest it. What in the hell does that mean? Coming and going, I'm always at home. Well, in a house now, using this house as a metaphor of the world, if I go to the living room or the kitchen, or the, I'm always at home. I'm always at home, you see. But if I go uh, to town, where is home? Well, I got to get back home. Oh boy, we're over this trip. I got to go to work, but I want to be at home. Uh, five o'clock, I can go home now. Uh, I'm at home, you see. Or you work all week and the weekend is, ah, oh, I can stay at home today. I'll be at ease today. I don't need to do anything today. I have no desires today. Now, don't nitpick here and think, well, you got to fix the roof. I mean, but you know, we're, we're working at a general viewpoint here, a general map. So what if the world, what if you're the center of the world? Well, the only way to be the center of the world is if we see the world as a GPS navigator. There's two maps. Each map has its use. But the problem is our worldview, our fishbowl, <coughs> fishbowl of our world, only has one <coughs> map. And that's the world out there is separate from you, and it exists outside of you. And when you die, you leave, and the world stays the same. That's a map, and it's useful, but it's not reality, it's not the truth, it's not the whole world. So the GPS navigator, the Buddhist navigator, gives you a different viewpoint so you can get out of the pain of desire. So when you are the center of the world, there is no desire for home because you're already at home. So you can get a new car, you can get a new kitchen. You can do anything you want when you're the center of the world because you're always at home. So you only get do what you need. If you really need a new kitchen, get a new kitchen. But you won't be if if the kitchen if if the uh, the, the kitchen. In other words, you 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 are what you are, and it's okay because you're always at home. You're always at home. You see. So there's nothing to attain. And if there's nothing to attain, there's no suffering because there's nothing to lose. You're always at home. <laughs> Coming and going, you're always at home. You're always at ease. At home, you're at ease. It's okay. Well, I can fix this and that, but I'm okay. I'm okay if it gets fixed or not fixed, you see. You're always at home. Coming and going, you're always at home. So this, these, these little Zen mantras or truths are not to be brushed away. They're very profound. You have to get it ring in your head. You have to let it seep in. You have to let it. You have to let it gnaw at you. You have to let it work inside of you. A nagging truth. What does this mean? You see, am I? When you get something, are you any better off than you were before you got it? 
Well, the only way you're better off is you got rid of the desire for it. <laughs> but you're always at home. Where can you go that you're not at home? If you go to Alaska, you're still in the same situation. You're still now. So you're always now, and the world changes around you like a merry-go-round. Forms rise, forms die. Coming and going is always going around, but you are immutable. You are unchangeable. You're always at home, and the world goes around. But on the flat map, on the material map, you got to change to be at home. You got to move. You got to go to you got to get a new job. You got to get a new relationship. You got to get a new kitchen. So you're always at pain. <laughs> On one map you're always at home. On the other map you're always in the pain of desire. So on one map desire is good. On the other map desire is a pain that you have to get rid of. Thanks for dropping in, coming and going. You're always at home. <laughs>